OK, uh, I'm just going to check this works just uh, just so we know it's working. Is that working, Vicky? Great, excellent. Hi, uh, my name's Tim Yeah. I work for uh, the Midlands Energy Hub, uh, which is run by Nottingham City Council. I've been asked today to give you a, a quick rundown about some of the work that we've been doing recently uh, across the Midlands. So just as a bit of background for those who don't know me, uh, I work for the Midlands Energy Hub, as I say. Uh, we are a collection of, of individuals who uh, are working across the Midlands and we're based within each of the uh, the, the local enterprise partnerships uh, across there. So there's, there are nine of us across the Midlands and we, we each serve to try and uh, deliver the energy strategies that, that each of the, the LEPs actually have in place. So the, just as, as I said, background then, so the LEPs are here to help deliver energy strategies that the, the LEPs and local authorities have all put in place over the last few years. The idea behind uh, the, the, the Midlands Energy Hub was to help to try and unlock some of those projects that haven't been delivered for a various number of reasons. It might have been financing, it might have been political, it might have been uh, a community block or whatever it might be. So the, the idea is that we work with the, the local communities and, and the LEP and the the, uh, the local authorities to, to get some of these things working. So a lot of the work has been at, at a local level. Now it might have been working on a, a funding application for, for a heat network, for instance. Um, but we also try to do some things across the, the whole region, which have got benefits for the, the, the Midlands region and, and potentially beyond to the whole of England. So a few of those include the Parish Carbon Calculator. Now that was a project that we worked with uh, the Centre for Sustainable Energy to, to deliver a, a package that local communities could use to actually understand what their carbon footprint is. We've also worked with organisations like Senex to actually have a look at what it would, what a transport hub, um, purely made up of low carbon um, transport modes, would would actually look like. So we deliver those sort of projects, and we've also developed a number of finance models to to help local authorities and the LEPs to understand how we can actually get public and private finance together to actually deliver some of these projects. And the final one on that list is the low carbon environmental goods and services sector project, which I'll refer to as LSEGS because it's a, a lot shorter. And that, that's what I want to concentrate most on in, uh, in, in this, this short uh, video. So what is LSEGS? Well, the low carbon environmental goods and services is a important part of the, the economy, which often goes really under and un, un, not understood particularly well. The UK has got a very clear commitment to, to clean growth. Uh, the commitment set out in the industrial strategies and the clean growth strategies uh, which exists. And we've actually got a fairly strong record in, in terms of clean growth. Carbon emissions are substantially down on where they were between 1990 and 2015. They've gone down. Uh, and that's whilst experiencing increases in GDP. So we've actually done really well in terms of, of, of managing carbon emissions over the, the certainly over the recent past. And the largest contribution factor has, has been through the decarbonisation of power, um, and that's primarily through through wind has been, uh, certainly offshore wind has been a major factor in actually reducing that. But we've also improved energy efficiency, we've recycled a lot of waste products, we've improved uh, automobile engine technology. So there's been a number of different things that have come together to actually help reduce uh, our, our carbon footprint. And they are all part of this low carbon environmental goods and services. However, that is very often not really taken into account. And the automobile thing is counted as, as, as car stuff, wind stuff is wind. And, and we don't really get a very full picture of what the entire LSEGS economy looks like. So what we what we decided to do was to see if there was a different way of, of looking at this. So we we engaged a company called K Matrix to help us understand better what this sector actually looks like. So 
what K-Matrix do is almost turn the standard way of looking at uh, the economy on its head. Usually, the economy is looked at purely in terms of um, the goods uh, are sold from a top-down point of view. But what, as I've sort of just described, the LSEX economy goes sort of like across a whole range of things which you wouldn't normally class as low carbon environmental goods. So what we try to do is see, right, there's bits across all of those different areas that we need to pull together to support that low carbon economy. So that includes all the supply chain inputs, it includes all of the, the specific elements which are, are, are very key and you, you'd always include those. So it's, it's like an umbrella which, which pulls together all these different disparate elements. The K-Matrix who pull this together, they take transactional data from across numerous sources. And in this case, over 70,000 sources were used for this study. It also pulls on a methodology that's been around and been used for a long, long time in other sectors, um, but not really ever looked before at, at, at low carbon environmental goods in terms of what it would look like across the Midlands. So, as I say, it turns it on its head, so the, the taxonomy that LSEG uses to actually break down the different parts of the economy it was almost on its head so as you can see here there are there are three main areas that make up uh, um, the LSEG so we've got low carbon we've got environmental and renewable energy so those are the sort of like the level one subsectors which you can break things down to and underneath that there are numerous other subsectors which all feed up back through the, the taxonomy to, to get to your, and when you, you combine all this together, you get the, the, the combined total for, for the whole of the Midlands. So I just wanna, it's, it's a very in-depth uh, report. A, there's something like uh, 30 spreadsheets full of data. There are hundreds of pages of the reports. Uh, obviously haven't got time to go into it today, but I just wanted to give some very brief headlines of what the, the LSEX actually came out with. Now this is for the Midlands. I'd also note that each individual local authority can get the data for their specific local authority area as well. But I want to concentrate on the headlines at this stage. So what we can see is that across the Midlands, it's worth £26.6 billion in 1920. And that's also been going up year on year since the, the data that has been gathered has, uh, demonstrates. It's also important to notice that that's serving over 10,500 businesses and employing nearly 200,000 people in 2019-2020. So the, the MEH, so that's the Midlands Energy Hub area, that accounts for 12.1% of the low carbon services of the whole of the UK. So it's a significant uh, contributor to, to this area of the, of, of, of the, the economy. Just briefly looking at what that would look like for the marches, you can see actually it's worth 1.8 billion in the marches, 700 companies, 12,000 employees. And that is a significant chunk of the marches economy. Uh, to give you an idea, that's around about between, it's about 9% of the marches economy is just wrapped up in the low carbon environmental goods and services. So it is really important. The other thing this the report does, it does start to break this down for us. In fact, it breaks it down into immense detail. But again, a fairly high level summary is looking at the biggest subsectors. So in, in terms of the, the Midlands, the five largest subsectors in the in low carbon environmental goods and services areas are wind, building technologies, alternative fuels, photovoltaics, and water and wastewater treatment. And you can see the, the value that those are, are worth. You can also see how those are growing year on year and how the employees and companies are also growing. So it's important to recognise that this is a, is a big sector, but it's also growing. We can also start to, to use more uh, informative um, information about this. We can start to see the scalability. And what I mean by scalability is it, it doesn't just look at the size. It also looks at other elements of, uh, of, of the the environment in which that, that part of the economy is, is working to see if, if there is the potential for this area to grow more. Um, very briefly, this shows that if, if, if you're in the top right hand corner of this graph, 
that shows that it's it's most likely to be scalable. So this these you want to be looking uh, at your strengths are things over this side on the right hand side of the of the, the graph. And more importantly, the, the higher up it is, um, the, the 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 more scalable it, it becomes. Just to give you an idea of how it varies across the across the, the region, this is for the marches. So you can see the, there are bits of it which are which are less scalable, uh, but they're still very important in terms of the, the GVA. And then we can look at it, as I say, down to different levels. That's Herefordshire's, that's Shropshire's, and that's Telford and Reekins. So you can see different areas have different strengths, different weaknesses, um, but it does help us to start identifying which areas we need to be uh, uh, targeting in the future. What we can also look at, and this this is another element of the of of, of the reports that that come out, are skills, where capacities for training, and in where the gaps are, where we need to do more work. So this is another area which is which is important to look at, and we can see that the higher up again, the 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 better you are really in terms of um, how how we can uh, improve the the training and skills of the workforce. Again, the, the size of the circles denotes their importance in terms of GBA. So the bigger the circle, the the more uh, of the economy is wrapped up in those areas. So you, again, you might want to target those. Again, that's for the whole of the, the Midlands, and we can look again at what it looks like for the marches. So we can see where the, the important areas are for us to target in the marches. And we can also start to look at the carbon that's associated with these, these elements of the, the economy. So again, this is this is a, a useful uh, idea to sort of say if, if carbon is one of our real main driving forces, and when you look at the net zero aspirations of all the local authorities within the marches now, they need to be seeing right. This is this is where we can we can get our, our biggest bang for our buck in terms of reducing the carbon emissions from the, the low carbon environmental goods and services sector. So we need to be looking at alternative fuels as one of those areas that we concentrate our resources on. So again, that's that's what it looks like at the, the, the Midlands region area. That's what it looks like in the marches. So some slight differences, but generally speaking, a lot of the uh, potential carbon reduction is all in the in the same sort of areas. So we also have a number of different recommendations that the report comes out with. Um, we can see that um, th those are the, the, the five sort of sub -he um, main headings. There are a number of different subheadings which go underneath that. So in terms of uh, policy and governance, uh, for instance, um, we're, we're really looking at um, supporting the, the levelling up of, across the Midlands as well as the levelling up across the UK. So that's one of the, the recommendations that the report makes. Uh, we can also support procurement to grow that the, the low carbon environmental goods and services. I know that's something that the local authorities would be particularly keen to see if they can use the information from this report to help them do that. Um, and we can start working better partnerships um, across organisations because we've, we've a lot of us have actually all got the same aims and objectives. If we can work together and use the information that these reports provide, we can actually we can actually do more. So I think it's really important that we do that. As I mentioned earlier, we've, we've looking at investments, and that's one of the things that's one of the strengths of the Midlands Energy Hub is, is looking to, to, to de deliver is, is better opportunities for highlighting opportunities for investments across the Midlands. Um, and that's some, something we're certainly working to support businesses and investors, investors to come together to, to achieve that. Uh, in terms of the, the technology, I've whipped over that one, sorry. We, there's there's all sorts of things to look at, new technologies that are coming about. So there's things like, uh, uh, we've heard a lot about hydrogen, we'll continue to hear a lot about hydrogen, but there's a lot of other innovative low carbon technologies. So there's the, there's all the whole thing around that which we're going to look at. In terms of business support, that's something that um, all of the LEPs are very keen to, to see what they can do to support businesses through uh, long term support potentially or, or other funding, uh, transport transport of knowledge from academia to, to industry and that's something that, that I know Crest worked very hard to achieve as well. Um, and also improving the general level of carbon literacy uh, across all sectors so that we we understand the language that each other are talking about. 
And finally, uh, there are a number of recommendations that are specific for the marches. So, it, and, and as I say, each, each area across the Midlands has got these specific recommendations. So for us in the marches, it's to look at developing an evidence-based plan for the growth of the whole sector. Uh, that's one that's fairly common across all, all of those LEP areas. Um, looking at business support programmes and seeing what we can do to deliver that within the, the role of, of the LEP. Uh, optimise uh, benefits from unlocking um, the seven regional growth zone projects, which are, which are being set up as well at the moment. So that's that's something which uh, we'll no doubt be talking about in the future with um, the River Seven Partnership, for instance, to see how we can work together to get the energy, the water, all all of the natural resources uh, and carbon uh, elements to come together and, and support that area. And then. The, the final one is building upon existing business networks and that's something we're, we're really doing today so that's that's one of the, those things that we're going to continue to do for uh, for the lot for the long term really so i say there's a lot of information behind this report um i've only been able to really scratch the surface uh, in, in this very brief presentation but all of the information is readily available and and available for anybody to download as and when they want to, to mess around with the figures and, and see, see what's important to themselves. So each of the regions has got its own report. They're all available. Um, there's uh, uh, the overarching report, which I've taken most of the information from today. We've also looked to see what the COVID-19 uh, impact was on the sector, and it, it has been fairly marked. But to say that I think there is going to be a good bounce back from that. And there's all of the recommendations are also pulled together into it to one handy report as well. Also a number of different presentations and, and literary reviews uh, out there as well. So all of the information I say it's the Midlands Energy Hub at the moment doesn't have its own website. So Sustainability West Midlands, who are also a partner in this study, uh, have kindly put all of their in all of the reports and information up on their website. The address is there. Uh, hopefully that link will work. And that's really why I want to leave it. If there's any questions that anybody has about the report, please do get in touch with me. There's my email address there. And yeah, any questions at all, happy to answer them. Thank you.